and the, the meaning of the colours spills over into an infinite interpretation. When I was in China, I spent a fair bit of time going to the Peking Opera and actually bought a collect masks, so all, all the characters were influenced by my mask collection from all around the world of collecting masks, but particularly I, I bought a few from the, from the Peking Opera. I was very influenced by, by that and the abstraction of it, because I didn't want to know what it meant, I just loved watching. So Yellow was very influenced by that, especially the makeup of it and the character as well because the gestures were very exaggerated and highly stylized, hyper real, um, exaggerated movements as you see in, in the Peking Opera. But also they related to, to childhood as well and to being a child. So they had that kind of duality where it was very Asian based in its theatre but very rooted in childhood and playfulness. So it was like an adult playing a child even though um, Rachel was quite young so it was like a parody in a way as well. Especially in Yellow, Nicole and, and Rachel worked very closely together because the moves were very choreographed and Nicole really got to put a stamp on Yellow's part and when I watch Yellow I see Nicole very much in the movements, you know, it's very Nicole, it's great to watch. And the music for that had an awkwardness about it which worked really well with the character that Rachel brought to Yellow as well. I was having problems with uh, a piece of digital hardware which was spitting out some crazy noise which it shouldn't do, but then I found that if I grabbed that, just muted sections of it, that it actually created these really cool, like people falling down hills almost. And they were really cool little textures. And then I, underneath that, I found, uh, I think it's from an old, it was an old movie that I had taped many years ago, uh, maybe a Hong Kong film, and it was just a, a loop, a one bar loop, and just put that on the, um, on the timeline and started distorting it, started playing with it and kept layering and layering and layering and eventually it came together as a really nice kind of piece. It does sound distinctly uh, Asian, I think. Got a whole lot of different sounds going on, a lot of contemporary sounds and it's a, it's a fun piece to listen to. White had to really be more introspective. It had to had to um, anoint the whole show with something that was about a moment of stillness and beauty. Vicky was a really close friend of mine, and I wanted to cast her in the show. And I, I knew she'd do a, a fantastic job because she she's not a dancer, but she she moves very well. And it was a moment for all of us because even as a as as a performer myself on stage, I stop and acknowledge um, the arrival of White on stage. And for Greg. With the music, it was a moment where he had to really pare down what he'd done and what he did do had to be very beautiful and quite profound on a musical level, which I think it was. Coming on stage to the gunfire and the battle scenes was a way of saying that man has this incredible ability to create and do amazingly beautiful things and have potential for, for tenderness as well as, as, as well as war. When Black comes on stage, it's really time to drive the show home. And I used to say to Black, um, to Diana, that she had to do a routine like it was she was doing an exorcism. She really had to be really focused and have a lot of venom and a lot of conviction because the music was going to be really powerful around and she had to carry it through. It was very difficult doing the painting up to that point, but once once she became embedded in the picture, it was I realised that I was on stage alone and this time I had to really finish the painting really quickly, but also I had to keep moving the whole time. The music for Black was the, the high point of the show, it was the zenith, it was the the point where everything has to happen, Every, everything has to go up. The painting's almost done, we've got four people lying on the canvas, we've got you know, almost fully realised tribal head, the most exciting part in the show where there's a breakdown and it's just a little bit of a, 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 a throw, a question and answer between a guitar and a tribal beat. Everyone's laid down in the painting. Anthony's working frenetically. And then he stands up for a moment and he just like throws to the painting and everyone just erupts. <laughs> Thank you.
but by the Friday night we had great crowds there. It was full, um, all the seating was full, booked up, and the crowds on the side just built and built, and people would come over and start to watch it, they just couldn't leave. And the response we got from the audience was amazing as well. When, when we got to the, the, the end of the show, it affected people in such a, such a powerful way, and it was amazing to be part of something that really affected people um, quite deeply, especially when all the, the face came to life at the end and the audience reaction to that was one of disbelief almost. That they, they thought that they just about had the whole thing worked out and then all of a sudden there was something they didn't expect and bang there it was. And it was kind of the ultimate surprise for them and it was such a kick for that to happen. And it was a, it was a nice way to wind down the performance rather than just doing a traditional, you know, here's the big finale, we're out of there. We just wanted the performers to leave getting gonged off stage effectively. I play, the, play these little uh, ad-libbed pieces and then just punch them out of, out of the, uh, the painting and they come back to life and walk off. They, they survey the painting, have a look around and see what it is they've done. And it was, a, it was a nice way to wind down the performance rather than just doing a traditional, you know, here's the big finale, we're out of there. It's an amazing experience to um, formulate an idea and see it come to fruition the way it did uh, on that scale because, you know, it was a fairly fairly big production. And it was, it was also amazing to have the idea and put the thing together on one page. And then I remember saying to Greg some time ago that I had this paint opera that I'd written and then one day I was going to get it on and he was going to do the music to it, you know. And um, he was like, yeah, cool, that'd be great. But then I don't think he expected it to come on as quickly as it did because when the opportunity came, it was like, it's going to happen, you know. The union that we had and the experience I got to work with Greg and do what we did together and with Nicole and with all the performers was something that was fantastic. Opportunities like this are a gift and you have to be grateful for it and I'm very grateful I got the opportunity to do something like this and hopefully we can take it to the next level and do it again one day.